I guess this is very raw and personal for um, New Zealanders after the attack in Christchurch. And uh, I mean, we as a country are very much around freedom of expression. And we've been grappling with this issue in the sense of the public generally are fairly outraged that um, a, the, the attack is, was, was, was Facebook Live and a perception that the company did not do anything about this. So I just wonder if there are, and there's no definition of hate speech, we know that, but there's a sort of a, a graduation of really of sort of ethics and morality um, in this. And uh, New Zealand, along with a number of other countries, um, agreed a Christchurch call. And this was not about taking down hate speech, but it was around um, uh, online violent extremism. And a sense that if the companies uh, cannot grapple with this, they're going to lose the court of public opinion. And then it's going to give power to the governments to regulate. So my question, and you touched on a bit, is around the transparency. Are these companies doing a good job? Um, you know, that group of young people sitting there with all those, you, you gave it lots of um, uh, sort of governmental type names, legislator and those things, but it's very opaque. What does that look like? And I guess our view is that these companies need to become much more transparent around that. And so my question is, are they doing a good job? And secondly, they're losing the court of public opinion because more around privacy and data invasion rather than the, than the hate speech. The hate speech, I think, has become later. So... You know, what can these companies do, I think, um, to improve that public profile? And then finally, just on the institutions, are we missing governmental institutions? And I know there's different views in different countries around the role of government, but you mentioned some of those tools that perhaps would... Uh, institutions that will provide some transparency, some accountability, both at the government level too, so we as a public can have faith in our institutions to uh, manage this carefully. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Ambassador, thank you for those questions. And, um, and I think, you know, the, the tragedy, I mean, the deep tragedy of Christ Church, of the massacre, I think really does focus our attention on, on the way in which the, the platforms can be abused, right? I mean, fundamentally, this is a crime of an individual against specific, I think, Muslim worshipers in, in Christchurch, right? That's the fundamental part. And the question then is, right, to what extent should that, you know, that ability of this one depraved individual, you know, to what extent should that kind of content be allowed on the platform? And I think that by and large, I'm guessing we would agree, although I don't want to make any assumptions, um, but I'm guessing we would agree and that most people would agree, and even the, the Facebook rules on the content itself would agree, that that is the kind of content that should not be on the platform, and that every measure should be taken in order to resist the ability of bad actors to incite violence, right? But then it, it and that's sort of the overall approach and the idea, and I think the public policy question, right? But then you ask some really hard questions, I think. And so I'll, I'll try to answer them each in turn. So one is, are, are the companies doing, doing what they should be doing here? They're incredibly opaque. They are not doing enough, at least in terms of disclosing to the public how they conceive of these, these problems and how they implement them and how they enforce their rules. I think they, they have failed. And that feeds into your third question, which is the public's view of the companies is extremely, and, and I, by the public, I mean, right for the moment, I'm talking about democratic, the de public's in democratic space, because there's a little bit of a difference, which I do want to say something about, about spaces outside of democratic countries, uh, like in, in the Pacific or, uh, or in Asia or the United States or, or Europe. But I do think that the, the lack of transparency, the opacity of the companies, and the sense that they have become forums for bad actors, those things, it's, a, it's a, a real toxic brew for the companies, and there's extreme alienation from the companies. On the other hand, the companies are remarkably popular. So, you know, the public is fickle, right? It's not as if 
there's been this, I mean, it's true. I mean, I have teenagers. They're not really on Facebook. Um, but around the world, Facebook is incredibly popular still, even in the places where they cause harm. So, so that, I mean, I think that combination is, is cautionary for us. So um, in thinking about that, maybe sort of focusing in on, on the Christchurch call a little bit and the question of live streaming, the, the question that I, I really want people to think a little bit about and, um, and for governments and the companies and the public to grapple with is that everything involves trade-offs. And we should just be honest about the trade-offs. So live streaming for some narrow quantity and na narrow um, kinds of content like this, you know, abhorrent violence, as, as the Australian, the new Australian law puts it, right? That it's a very, very tiny percentage of the of what's on what's live streamed, but it's it's abhorrent, and it can cause real. Well, this is I think an empirical question that deserves a lot more study, but it it, it appears to be able to incite violence and to incite hatred and discrimination. Okay, so we could conceive of that as the core problem, and we could imagine saying, well, then anything that displays, well, we could say any kind of live streaming should be subject to a one hour delay. You know, like if, if you're trying to watch, in the old days, trying to watch a Knicks game in New York, you might, it might be a little bit of a delay, right? So um, I, I'm not from New York, I'm a Lakers fan, just to be clear about, about all that. Um, although that's traumatic too these days. But, um, but there could be, a, you could say as a rule, that would be our technical solution, and then that will give us time, although I, I don't know if it would give enough time, to evaluate content and decide, okay, this is violent, this is extremist violence, however we define it, and that should come down. The problem, and this is the trade-off, and this is why I think it's a public policy question as much as it is a company question. The live streaming does have value in some environments and, and, and it has value for the dissemination of live public protest, which can be really timely. So you could imagine, um, you know, the other day the government of Sudan killed, and we don't know the numbers yet, but probably well over 100 protesters uh, in, in the context of, um, of the, you know, efforts at a transition to a democratic rule in Sudan, right? Like, I think many people around the world and in Sudan would benefit hugely from having that live stream, right? To have that in the moment and governments in the moment, at least sort of democratic oriented governments or governments with some leverage could put pressure on the government at that moment to save lives, right? To stop what they're doing. If we have a decision or a discussion around live streaming that is only about the harms, we might lose that. And that's, that's okay. I feel like that's a public dis discussion to have and a public decision. And we could also think about it in many other contexts. We could think about it in the context of, uh, of police abuse, where we've had some very striking examples of live streaming being really valuable to our public debate. So the, I, I think the Christchurch call is really important in the sense that it basically says this is a public question that needs to be resolved, not merely by the companies, although the companies have a major role to play, but it is of major concern to governments, to those who care about public policy, and it should be a public discussion. My hope is that that, that will trigger a broader discussion about how we think about making public decision making genuinely involving all the relevant stakeholders. At the moment, we don't have that. So I think my hope is if, there, if there's anything good that comes out of the last few months, that maybe that would be sort of a, an impact from the Christchurch call.